Well, here I am, Jay-Z NES, and I'm playing Conker's Live and Reloaded. And you're probably asking yourself, now Jay-Z, how did you get here playing Conker's Live and Reloaded? The original version is so much better. It's got all the dialogue uncensored and all this stuff. Well, it's a long story. And I'm gonna have to tell you. It all started yesterday. My bad birthday. Alright, fuck this. I'm not wearing the slime the whole time. Anyway, this is Jay-Z NES back again. We're talking about some Conquer Live and Reloaded. Had to do the cold intro there because it's fucking how Conquer starts in the thing. Funny thing about the song that plays in the intro there. Because, you know, it's, it's reminiscent, or I think is exactly the song from A Clockwork Orange. Uh, which I had never seen up until... Uh, right after I played this game or something like that. I, I think I was still maybe even playing the game at the time. Uh, I think I'd actually beaten it by that point. But, uh... It, basically, we watched it in one of my classes in college or whatever. And I heard the music. And uh, we always used to have to write these little essays about like what we like what happened each day, like in said movie or whatever. So, uh, like basically, I wrote about how one time, you know, like that that song, the, the first time I heard that was in Conker's Bad Fur Day, which is pretty funny. But we're actually talking about Live and Reloaded. I know it's a very controversial, uh, you know, game because it's like. It's not quite as beloved as the original game, um, because there's a lot of changes. They 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 uh, they censored a lot of the dialogue and whatnot, and uh, it's just kind of seen as the worst version, worst version of a of the game. But um, the funny thing is, I actually prefer the X prefer. <laughs> God damn it. Like, fur day. Anyway. Uh, I prefer the Xbox version, honestly. Which is very surprising to me. Um, there's some, there's some little flaws with the Xbox version. Like, they changed a few things and this and that. But, like, for the most part, it's essentially just the same game as the N64 version. So, if you've ever, like, been weary about playing the Xbox version because you think, Oh, they changed so much and they've censored all this stuff and it's... That's bullshit. Don't don't worry about it. Like, it's still the same game, and this is the definitive way to be playing Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, but the problem is, is that a game worth playing at the end of the day? I, now, when I played it originally, I was very excited uh, to play it, and. You know, there's a lot. It's a game that's like basically a parody. A parody's nuts. <laughs> it's a par Every time I say that word, I always think of that stupid game chaser joke. Anyway, <laughs> a parody of uh, old, you know, platformers from Rare. You know, Rare made this game too. But they're parodying games like Banjo-Kazooie and stuff. Originally, it was supposed to be sort of just another Banjo-Kazooie sort of game where um, they had a game called Conker's Pocket Tales, which I should have brought out. didn't think about that. Um, which I haven't ever finished. Maybe that'd be a fun one to finish sometime. Uh, but it was like just a kitty platformer on the on the 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 Game Boy there, um, Game Boy Color that is, and it was it was actually a pretty impressive game for its time, and so they were gonna make just like a 3D version of that basically, and it'd just be kind of another kitty platformer, but people gave them so much slack about or uh, flack about how Banjo Kazooie was just, you know. It's all just a kitty platform, and they say, oh, well, Rare's going to just keep making kitty platformers for the rest of their life, blah, 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 blah. And so they're like, you know what? Fuck you guys. We're going to make this raunchy, like, fucking controversial fucking game where we're going to say all the cuss words, and we're going to, you know, cute animals are going to get blown up, and there's going to be gore and, and violence and, and all sorts of vulgarness. So fuck you guys. We're going to make that instead. Just to subvert expectations or whatever. Uh, hey, look at that! This shirt actually came into play! I'm like, this is gonna be the most random shirt. It has no reference to the actual game. But I'm wearing a Last Jedi shirt. They did it to subvert expectations. Just like Ryan Johnson. He stole it from Rare. That's official. That's canon to life. You get, You heard it here. 
<laughs> knew there was a reason I was wearing this. I couldn't find my hat and time shirt. That's what I was uh, going to wear. But anyway, so the soundtrack is very quiet. Um, let's see. Maybe a little louder. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, like that's the history of it is like they, they just wanted to make um, like they were, they were just trying to make another platformer and then they said fuck that and they, they scrapped a whole game just to make a raunchier and te you know more vulgar game that uh, that kids uh, you know that one of the most controversial not one of the most controversial but a pretty controversial m-rated game for its time um if they had come out earlier in the n64 life cycle i think it would have been even more controversial but they actually had to write uh on the on, this is on the box and stuff too, like not intended for children, you know, basically on the thing because, you know, you, you'd assume that it is. Um, this is my original N64 cart right here. You can't really see. If I get it close enough, you might be able to see, but... Uh, but there's like a film layer over the, uh, over the layer here. Uh... And it's really faint, but up here at the top, it actually says property of Blockbuster. Kind of right there. So, it's a Blockbuster sticker that I can't get off. Didn't see it on the fucking uh, eBay post that I that I got it on, so that's a little disappointing. That's always been a kind of noteworthy thing about my, my uh, cartridge. It works fine and everything. It's fine. It's just it's fucking Blockbuster, man. But, now that Blockbuster's gone, I guess that's a piece of history right there. Uh, it'll always be on my Conker's Bad Fur Day cart. So, but yeah, the original game, I played this game, like, fucking, I don't know, it was years ago, like, maybe 20, fucking 13 or 14 or something like that. And, you know, it might have probably been, like, 2013 or something like that. So, like, seven years ago, like, Jesus Christ. It's been, it's been a minute since I played the original version there. And, uh... After I finished it, I kind of had good... Wait, what? You guys are hearing this, right? This is from Metal Gear Solid 3, almost. I didn't even think that... Was that game out at the time? I don't even remember this song from in the game, but this sounds just like Metal Gear Solid 3. What the fuck? I'm shocked, actually, by that. Anyway. Um, so, what was I saying? So, yeah, I played this a long time ago. Um, I remember having good memories of it after finishing it. But I think even back then, I kind of knew that the game was really rough around the edges. Um, in a lot of areas. And uh, I played Banjo-Kazooie before that because that's how I kind of play games is in order. Um, but, you know, in that game I really had enjoyed, but even that game, especially on the N64, is, is a little bit rough around the edges. Um, the Xbox 360 version that fixes that a bit, the controls are a little odd on that one, but that's the only difference. It looks really nice too. Um, that, that's one thing about this version of the game is it looks really nice. Um, it looks kind of shitty on just an Xbox, because you have, like, the composite cables or whatever. I had component cables. But what I ended up doing was I ended up getting this uh, pound cable, which was, like, I think 30 bucks or something. And this makes the game look like fucking, like an Xbox 360 game. I'm serious. Like, the resolution just, like, jumps, and it, it, it fucking looks really nice. Like, so get this shit if you're going to play your Xbox nowadays. I totally recommend it. It's only, like, 30 bucks. It's very much worth it. Um, all the pound cables are very much worth it if you're looking to just kind of get an HD feel for like most of the consoles that they make it for. So they have the, like the Dreamcast one, which looks really nice and stuff. I know like Adam Corlick is like, yo, you got to use the VGA and stuff. But it's like, I'm not fucking going to invest in that shit. You know, I have RGB, of course, for some of my older consoles and stuff. But, um, God, this is seriously just Metal Gear Solid 3. I don't know. Anyway, um... So the pound cable, it's definitely a good investment. I, I just thought this logo looked like Konami, like the old Konami logo. Like, what the fuck? Is that not what that is? Anyway, so, yeah. Um, and, and the control, the controls of the game um, are a little bit more natural on the Xbox uh, controller. That's why I've got these here. 
is it's, it's just more well laid out and you can use the trigger buttons and stuff like the N64 controller as much as I love it is is like it's just not made for a game like this like first of all the analog stick this one is nice and tight like it, it's good because this is a newer one uh, most of my other older ones though aren't as tight as this one um, I don't even remember how the fucking controls like worked on here but like like I, I can only imagine that this wasn't like ideal or whatnot you know you have the the Z trigger on the back and all that um, I just remember it being like really hard to kind of hard to manage and whatnot so um yeah like if you're gonna play this game definitely play the xbox version that's what i'm gonna say about that but the thing about back in the day was i i remember uh liking the game i do like the game you know well enough it's just the game I, I don't even know, maybe even at the t Well, at the time, it must have been pretty good. I, here's the thing I do like about the original game is the multiplayer um, thing, which is you have a bunch of guns, and you just kind of run around, and it's, like, it's pretty impressive for the N64. Like, um, it's definitely a little bit better than GoldenEye, like, nowadays uh, to play. I remember we used to play this a lot, um, multiplayer. So that's a really good redeeming aspect of the original game. And this game uh, has Xbox Live multiplayer, which... Like, obviously, probably isn't online anymore or whatever. But, um... God, it's just so variable, the, the sound. Anyway. So, um... So, yeah, like... Y you have... Y y so, that that was cool. And then, so I'm sure you can also do, like, uh... Local multiplayer on here. I, I'm pretty sure, anyway. And do the four-player. That's probably better. Um... What's funny about this game, though, control-wise, is the fact that it controls basically like the original, and the only difference, really, is the analog stick, which is a, a much better analog stick. Um, and you can kind of... Uh, the other difference is you can use this button, the this other analog stick, to um, control the camera, which is definitely helpful... Um, it's not always perfect, and it's a little imprecise at most times, but it's better than just the one analog stick and, what, the R button or something? Like, however you used to do it. Maybe it was the C buttons? I'm not quite sure. I don't really remember the, uh, control scheme of the original there, but... It's pretty, uh, it, it controls pretty well, other than the fact that the game... What I'm trying to say here is that the game controls about the same... Except for the analog stick, because it's more precise, allows for better movement. And the camera stick allows for better vision. But you still have all of the same quirks and level design and pitfalls and perils. And all of the problems of the original are still pretty much present in the Xbox version. So... If you're a really big fan of the original and you don't really aren't really bothered by those problems, then that's one thing. But if you had a hard time with the original, like I did, and you blocked most of it out of your memory, um, you're gonna have a harder time with the Xbox version as well. It'll be a little bit easier, but it's about the same game. So you know, <laughs> that is what it is. Uh, I forgot to mention at the top of the review, I was going to have him here reviewing it with me, but uh, whatever, it just kind of didn't, didn't happen. So th the reason I, you know, that that, uh, that I even got around to playing this game was not really because I was playing it. It was my friend uh, Jameson who was playing it. Um, we have a list. I, I was going to make a joke about that in the intro. Fuck. Uh, we have a list of games that have kind of been, um, it all started with a hat and tie. That was why I was going to wear the shirt. Um, I said to him, well, you know, like, why don't we play a bunch of games, because he never really played any platformer games, why don't we play a bunch of games leading up to, um, A Hat in Time, so we can kind of get you used to platforming games, and, uh, show you the history of platforming games, basically. So we played some games like Banjo-Kazooie, and we, uh, 
I think this might be the second one on the list. What else did we play? Did we play something else? I can't remember if we played any other platforming games or not. Um, I've got the list here somewhere, but... But yeah, so like... I know we at least played Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, and that was one that we did... I don't know. It's somewhere here. Um, might actually be... Over there. Anyway, um... So yeah... We have, we have, we got a bunch of them leading up, and uh, he's like, "Well, you know, we should play Conquer's Bad Fur Day at some point." And I'm like thinking, mm, "Should we though?" You know, like I'm I'm sitting here on the edge, like uh, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a little rough, and he, he's like, "No, but it's, it'd be funny. It'll be parody and all this shit." Um, and I'm sitting here like thinking, I just. I, like, I don't even remember, like, most of the levels at this point. Like, I've kind of blocked them out of my memory, but I just I just had these thoughts. Um, the, the one thing I was thinking of was the race section. We'll get to that in a bit. But um, I'm, I'm having these kind of, like, negative feelings of, like, dude, you don't even really, like, um, you know, you're new to this stuff. And this is a pretty, like, hardcore, like, platformer game. Um like, this is a tough game, you know, like, uh, for the most part. I, you know, not like Rayman tough or nothing, but it's like, y you definitely got to put a little bit of effort into it to get through it. And I'm thinking about this the whole time, and I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, should we really play that one? I was just kind of hoping we could skip over to, like, Sonic Adventure or something, which is the next one, uh, which we've played a little bit of back in the day. But uh, no dice on that, so we had to play Conker's bad fur day and then i was thinking well there's the xbox version i mean i have that should we just should we just play that and uh we, we ended up agreeing to play that one um and that way i get a review out of it and whatnot and like we're doing right now so um i could kind of compare and contrast the original and i was actually very pleasantly surprised that it's kind of a better version of the original just by just by a little bit though you know there's not a ton that they've super improved but it definitely works a bit better than than the original uh my point of that being i tried to talk him out of it he didn't want he wasn't having that so we played it and uh the game we played before this was link's awakening actually so that was pretty cool um he really enjoyed that it's maybe even more so than myself which is just kind of insane to say like we're talking about like some of the best games we've played we were doing like a tier list and he put it like above uh some of the just like crazy high on this list or whatever and i'm just like wow this is this is a game that this guy really likes like i like the game too don't get me wrong it's in my top 10 or whatever but like fuck he really likes that game i guess um so do i i mean it's you know childhood classic for me but it just goes to show that it holds up super well and it's probably one of the best zelda games ever made so uh, there you go. Stick that in your craw and, and smoke it. You fucking uh, Link to the Past is the best one, or uh, Zelda CDI. I don't know. Link to the Past is good though. Um, I'm trying. I was trying to think of like uh, Fear out of Hourglass is the best one. Who's gonna say that? Nobody's gonna say that. Nobody's gonna say Spirit Tracks either. Fucking Spirit Tracks. God damn it. All right. Uh, anyway, though. No. Um. Or, uh, Twilight Princess is the best Zelda game ever! Or whatever, I don't know, fuck. Uh, so Link's Awakening is a pretty great Zelda game, but we're not talking about that. So, funnily enough, the next game we play after that is this one, Cocker's Bad Fur Day. And, um, I just knew there was gonna be, uh, it, it, it was gonna be a struggle to get through. You know, Funnily enough, it was less of a struggle than probably, like, Banjo-Kazooie to get through, honestly, for, for when we were playing it. We actually made good time through the game or whatnot. Is this still going? Yeah, it's just really fucking quiet. God damn it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Let's go to the next song. Uh, so, yeah, like, uh, what was I saying? Basically, uh, I knew it was going to be a struggle to kind of get through and whatnot, um, but we did make good time through it, so I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed, but we definitely had some some, some troubles with it. Um, 
And I figured the best way to kind of go through this game and just, like, talk about it would be to uh, kind of just... Uh, I'm going to, like, look through here and I'm going to, like, watch this video kind of, like... Uh, kind of remember what happened. I, I I have a better memory now because what, what I was saying earlier was I kind of blocked the whole game out of my head. So when we were actually playing through it again, I'm like, oh god, I remember this part, you know, and, and like, but I didn't remember like most of the levels. Like I remember the first few, and then like I totally had forgotten about that bat level. There was a lot of parts of the war level I like forgot about, but like everything's still there from the N64 version. Like all the same puzzles and whatnot are pretty much still there. What is this music? Is this from Conker's Bad Fur Day, Live and Reloaded? I, I, I haven't heard any of this. It's just like the overworld music and all this shit. Like, I don't remember any of this music. Fuck. Soundtrack's good, I swear. It's just, like, the Xbox version has a bunch of extra stuff. Maybe this is for, like, multiplayer maps or something? I don't fucking know. Anyway. So I'm gonna kind of refresh myself as we go through, and hopefully that'll work decently. Um, so you kind of start out uh, it's, it's funny, you know, the, the, the game has good humor, and, and there's that, and that's a good element of the game, is, is that definitely, like, the story and the humor is pretty, pretty funny, but, um, so the game kind of starts out, like, you're drunk, and you're in this bar or whatever, and you're, like, calling your girlfriend, well, you, the game starts out with the, the thing I did, you know, where you, he's, like, in the throne room, and you see all the characters in the game or whatever, and, um, comes kind of full circle in the end, and you get to see that at the end there, but, um, what ends up happening is uh, then it flashes back to the day before, which is his bad fur day, like I like I mentioned in there. And then, uh, so he's in this bar, and he's, like, getting drunk or whatever with all these guys who are going to go off to war, which is the war level. Um, by the way, I want to mention that. Like, it's funny how the multiplayer, and especially on this one, this, this, is, the, this, this is, like, the loading screen right here. Actually, you know what's funny? I don't even remember this character, uh, this, like, squirrel lady or whatever. Like, she wasn't even in the fucking game as far as I remember. Anyway, so, like, this and, like, some of the other, like, main characters, uh, and bosses and shit are, like, this loading screen that, like, always happens. Like, like, the, there's so much loading in this game. Like, this game, it's on a cartridge, there was, like, barely any loading. That's pretty cool. Like, fucking, this game loads all the fucking time, man. It takes forever. It's not even that, they're not even that long of load screens, but I just wanted to mention that. And, and on there, it prominently features the war section. You can see right here, the war, like, that's the big section. Like, that's the second to last fucking section in the entire game. That's, like, oh, that's pretty much the last, like, real level in the entire game. So you literally don't even use guns until the seventh level, which is the level right before that, which is just mind-boggling since that's that's what the multiplayer is and that's like uh that's what they're really touting on the cover and on these loading screens and stuff is these guns and you don't get any of that shit until way late in the game just putting that out there that's just interesting to me you know it's just interesting um i guess there's gonna be spoilers or whatever if you still care about conquer's bad fur day spoilers Final Fantasy VI, I really didn't want to spoil for you guys, but Conker's Bad Fur Day is not something that you really need to remain unspoiled for. I mean, like, if you want to remain unspoiled, that's cool. It, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll probably ruin a few of the jokes. I'm probably going to talk about the final boss or whatever and kind of ruin what the reference is there. But I'm just saying, uh, if you don't want to know, you don't want to know. That's cool. Um, so, we're starting off. He's drunk. He's going, uh, he's, he's there with all the, his war, the war buddies, right? The, the guys who are going to go off to war or whatever. He's sitting there in the bar with them. And actually, the, the, uh, the title, the, the, like, file select screen is the bar, which they have that on the N64 version too, which I always thought was kind of a cool touch, and you kind of see all the characters and stuff in there. Pr pretty neat. Good stuff. Um, and then it cuts to, uh, because you hear Conker, he's calling his girlfriend or whatever. It cuts to her, and then I swear, this is like, wh why did they do this in the 90s? Like, actually, this is 2000, 2000? Pretty sure this is like 2000 or 2001 or something. Um, maybe it's 2001? I don't know. It's, it's, it's actually one of the last N64 games, which it's not the last N64 game, even the last Rare game, because they put out uh, Banjo-Tooie after this. Um, and... 
the very last game uh, for the N64, as far as I remember, I think this is an accurate statement. This is what Nick told me one time, anyway, is, is uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, though, which random game, right? Uh, but anyway, so, uh, so yeah, he's, he's, uh, but, but why did they always do this in the 90s? This is what I want to know. Uh, you know, Space Jam, and then this, this, this is why, and, uh, was it some scene from The Lion King where everyone's like, that's what turned me into a furry or something. Like, they fucking cut to the, to the, uh, Barry. That's, that's her name, Barry. She's also a squirrel. She looks like a rabbit. She looks, she looks like fucking the rabbit from Space Jam or whatever. Uh, but, uh, they cut to her ass and then, like, um, uh, like, <laughs> she's, like, sitting there working out or whatever. And, uh, Cocker's, like, trying to call her and be like, hey, I'm not coming over. I'm just getting drunk with my friends or whatever. And he's like, oh, I think she, I think she bought it or whatever. Come on, guys. And so he's all drunk or whatever. And you're, like, staggering along. Um, and then you get to this, you get outside or whatever. And, and uh, you get this part with the scarecrow, Birdie the scarecrow. She's like, why is that his name? I don't know, whatever. Um, and he's, like, telling you about the controls and shit. But you're, like... Like, you're all wobbling or whatever, because, like, you're, you're all drunk and you're, like, puking everywhere. And they teach you about uh, context-sensitive buttons, which is a pretty cool feature. It's, like, what you do throughout the entire game. Um, it, it's a clever way for them to fit in, like, a bunch of, like, random stuff and, like, little references and whatever. Um, basically, there's these, like, B buttons um, strewn throughout the level, which, by the way... Yeah, you can even see it on these controllers. This is some fucked up shit right here. So on the N64, you can see clearly it's the way it's always been. B and then A. B is the blue button, A is the other button, right? They're, they're in that pattern. They're actually... Wow, even on the Xbox controller, you can see the colors are actually reversed. Uh, the green one is the... Uh is is you see what i mean like green is uh what is it a yeah green is a and then x which isn't like you know but like the position of x is, is a like you know that one's blue anyway weird anyway so what my point was is it goes b then a right that's how that works well, on the goddamn xbox controller it's flipped it's b here and a here which is just all fucked up like so half the time you know you hit what is it, B or A? One of, it's one of them to jump, and it's all backwards from the fucking N64 version. I, I hated that shit. Anyway, it just confused me. Anyway, so, um, so you hit B, which is now reversed for some reason, but you hit B at these, these uh, like, big buttons everywhere in the world, and they can be anywhere, in boss fights and all sorts of places. Uh, but then you get, like, some kind of random weapon or, like, a, like a, like, uh, at first it's like you get, you just get whatever you kind of need in that moment. Um, so at first it's like he gets, uh, like a, a thing to make him not be drunk anymore or whatever. And then, um, later on you get like weapons and stuff. A lot of times it's like a throwing dagger and sometimes it's like, uh, I'm thinking of the level, the, the war level that got like a rocket launcher you use in one of the, uh, the bosses there, uh. So, yeah, but, so, okay, so he's, he's, he's there, and then you, ca you kind of go through this, um, they start off forgiving, they do, because you go through this part where you're going up this, like, spiral, kind of like Spiral Mountain, actually, if you think about it, um, but you're going up there, and you're jumping, you're platforming, if you fall, no big deal, you just get put back to the beginning, no, no big deal, no, no health yet, none of that, that's cool, it's good, it's a good way to start the game, great, fine, fantastic. Uh, so, then you figure out you gotta go back. So you go, and you go into this room, and there's these enemies, and, uh, Conker picks up a frying pan, which is like it was in the original. He starts beating on these enemies, and then, just to subvert expectations, you know, uh, he puts down the frying pan, picks up a bat, and is like, ah, oh, this is a much better weapon, oh, I'm gonna take this with me. Instead of the frying pan. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Are they going to change everything in this game? And it's like, and then he's like, hey, game designers, don't do anything different this time. I swear, this better be the only change. And uh, it really was the only change, honestly. Like, I was, 
it, it's funny because I, I was sure that that was a joke about how they were going to change a bunch of stuff, but like, no, like that's actually a joke about how they're not changing very much in the game. So like, rest assured, like just be, be okay with that. Seriously, this, this music sounds like it's out of Castlevania or something. Like, seriously. It's probably from the fucking Dracula level or whatever. But, like, where's all the... Where's, like, the overworld theme and shit? You know, like... <laughs> this is so dumb. This doesn't even sound like Conker's Bad Fur Day. Let's see. Where are we at? Yeah, it is! It's the fucking... Have we even heard the, the overworld theme yet, though? Whatever. We'll just let it be. We'll just let it be. Uh, so... Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so then you get out, then you're in the overworld, you gotta help this, this, this bee lady get her beehive back, so it's like the, like a first, uh, kind of your first taste of what's going on. You go to the first level, um, after using, like, a slingshot to kill these bugs or whatever, you go to the first level, and the first level's not so bad, it's like a pretty decent way of showing you lightly what you're in for you know like it's a pretty easy thing all you got to really do is bring this cheese as mouse and then you go inside and then you fight a boss and then uh you know you do that a few times like you go back and fight this boss again and it's like it's a cool reference to the terminator or whatever which is pretty cool it's like one of your first big references in the game to like a movies and stuff which they'll do a lot throughout the game um but before that there's like you kind of get a sense for, um, well, I, I think it really starts when, I th on the first boss fight is really when it starts, is, uh, it kind of gets brutally difficult because once you've kind of beaten the boss, you get to climb, there's water coming up, and you get to climb up this ladder, and then there's these, like, wiggling, uh, electrical wires, like, everywhere, and motherfucking first wire that you you really need to cut is right behind you and it's like low to the ground so you're not usually gonna see it so i had such trouble with this part of like looking around for this sh and shit and i look at the video and i'm like even when i was watching the video i didn't really understand where this wire was and then i like finally figured it out like oh shit it's there that's where the wire is or whatever um yeah, so, like, it's interesting. Like, that's that's when you kind of get your first taste. Like, this, this is maybe going to be a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but story-wise, like, there's not a lot going on. It's like, you get to bounce on the... This, this sunflower has these, like, big breasts or whatever. And, and like, um, this the king bee is, like... Like, come, he, he, like, wants to go and pollinate her or whatever. <laughs> and then Conker's like, ugh, pollinating her. Ugh, that sounds, that sounds, I don't, I don't know about that or whatever. <laughs> and so the whole point of this game, the whole collectibles that you're getting the whole time is money or whatever. Because Conker just wants to get rich. I guess that's the joke or whatever. Which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so, so but, but you, you, uh. You really get start to get a feel at that point, like maybe this is gonna be a little bit uh, harder, and uh, you know a little, a little bit more messy than I thought it was gonna be. So you get out of that level, and then you go to. Um, well, I think you have a choice if you go to. Yeah, let me look at the, the fucking guide. So yeah, so you do. Okay, yeah. Oh, and there's like this pitchfork and this paint can and this uh, paintbrush. They're all like fucking racists or whatever. They're like, there's one part where it like flashes back to them for, for a second and they're like the Ku Klux Klan or whatever. Like, I don't know why, why this is, they're like a southern stereotype or whatever. It's just pretty funny. Um, but anyway, so, so yeah, you get, uh, then you get on top of this like barn or whatever to, uh, at the end of that level and this guy like flips you up, you get more money, that kind of thing. Why, why are we already at chapter four? Is, how's this chapter three? So you got... Okay. Windy, which is chapter two. Oh, shit. Wait a second. No. Wait a second. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. I, here's the thing. You see? Wow, this is fucked up, actually. So what I was actually supposed to do... 
think. Is this is this accurate? Oh, I missed a part actually. Um, when you die, the first time you die, which is pretty funny, you get uh, the, you go to like hell or something, and then like the Grim Reaper's there, and his name's Greg, and he's it's like it's like a whole thing where um, you know, you can see it kind of over over here, uh, on this end, like it, there's a whole parody bit about that, and then he's like, um. Uh, he's like, oh, you're one of them squirrels, and he's like, yeah, I'm a squirrel, and he's like, yeah, well, that means you can have as many lives as you think you can get away with, or whatever, <laughs> it's just like, it's like a funny way of explaining how you have infinite lives or whatever, which is pretty funny. Uh, one thing about the infinite lives, though, is you have a set amount of lives for some reason, but then after you run out of that, you continue, but continuing is like continuing is in Simon's Quest, you just kind of start off where you left off like at the last checkpoint or whatever so it's like not a big deal to continue but then it's like why make lives to begin with so that that's a little nitpick uh what i'm surprised about is actually i think i was supposed to do the great mighty poo or, well not the great mighty poo that's the next part actually uh the poo cabin part uh that's supposed to be the first one where you like fight the bull and stuff we were actually supposed to do that uh before we went and did uh, the uh, the barn part. I, I didn't even know that. That's supposed to be the first level. So there's a little bit of, uh, you know, like you can kind of do things out of order, uh, sequence breaking whatnot, um, which is kind of interesting, actually. I, I didn't even know that. I always do the that one level with the barn and stuff first. So um, then the game starts going completely off the rails. The uh, fourth, or chapter four, um, of like nine or whatever but this level is called bats tower and at first i thought oh is this the dracula level like earlier in the game or something because i remember it being pretty late into the game because that's when you start getting guns and stuff but no what it is is a level that i just completely fucking like warped out of my mind because um uh, it's a bunch of bullshit. This is probably... God, can I say it's the worst level in the game? I, I think it is poten potentially the worst level in the game. Basically, all you're doing is going up a tower. Um, and you're going up this tower. And there's just, like, really narrow platforms. If it's not the worst level in the game, it actually is a perfect representation of what's to come in the game. How, how, like, bullshit everything is later on and whatnot. Um, so... Oh, yeah. And it has the that water part, which, like, is one of the worst parts of the game. Um, so, yeah, this is probably the worst level in the entire game. So you're just going up this tower, and there's, like, there's, like, these cogs. There's, like, these catfish ladies... Who like are like we got money inside this safe or whatever and Kaka's like I like money I'm gonna go get that money and and uh so uh the so catfish lady send you inside the safe there's this like giant cat or uh, dog shark thing or whatever and uh inside the safe there's like these cogs and the cogs are like like skanky women or something <laughs> like it's so stupid the the, the humor here and they don't want to like go into place and grind with the, with this like guy cog or whatever you know, so it's like some sexual thing or something. Um, so you have to like go and beat them down and like put them into place uh, of the of the the cog thing so that the gears will turn so you can actually like get up and start climbing this tower or whatever. But when you start climbing the tower, the the platforms are so narrow that it's ridiculous. And and not to mention that oh I forgot to mention this at first. Uh, not to mention I forgot to mention. Um, well, actually, I forgot to mention in the poo part, there's a, there's a part where you roll a big ball of poo up a hill to, like, knock onto this, uh, to one of these enemies. And the enemies in this game are, like, these armored, like, goblin guys or whatever. And these guys are kind of annoying uh, to destroy. You really have to hit them with your bat, like, in a rhythm. And my friend kind of never got this down until, like, the very end of the game. But I kind of knew what the rhythm was. Uh, just from feeling it out, you know, but you can't really explain that to somebody. So, like, that that's the kind of stuff that's really hard for me to, um, to, like, establish with him, like, 
how, how this works. It's kind of like in Spyro, it's like the gliding. You have to, at the height of your jump, you have to then do that. And they also had th that in this game, that's why I'm bringing that up, is uh, Conker has like a secondary like twirl jump or whatever, um, kind of like Tails when uh I, I i have no clue what's going off the soundtrack right now like tails uh where he like spins a little bit more after your initial jump but if you jump and then just do that you're not getting the momentum of your first jump at the height of your first jump then you twirl and then you got more of a farther jump you know and that's how platforming games work like that and then you also have a high jump where you crouch and then jump like that which is actually from Mario 2, uh, and I actually just talked about that in Mario 3D World. Actually, I th think I forgot to mention that in my Mario 3D World review. But anyway, um, so basically, uh, when you're climbing this tower, there's these, uh, you have those enemies, which is annoying. Um, the nice thing is when you destroy enemies, uh, they don't respawn, I believe. Maybe after you continue, they respawn. Maybe that's what the continues do. I, I don't remember. But there's, like, a certain point where they don't respawn or whatever. And that's that's pretty nice. Um, that once you get rid of them, you just kind of get rid of them. The bats always respawn, but those iron guys didn't always respawn, if I remember correctly. But anyway, uh, so those are really fucking annoying enemies in this game. Um, especially for a beginner. Because they're just really tough. And, and uh, as soon as you hit them once... They, if you don't get it in the rhythm of trying to destroy them, they spike up, and uh, basically you're gonna get hit. And you, you only have like six hits in this game. Uh, you revive yourself by chocolate. That's uh, chocolate is like your coins or your life or whatever, like your hearts in this game or whatnot. So I don't know why chocolate, but that's a thing. So, um, but you're climbing this tower. You have these narrow platforms that are ridiculous, and you have to like. Ugh, you have to, like, fucking be spot on with this shit. Um, the way I found to do it is, like, I, I would turn the camera so it looked like I was almost side-scrolling or whatever. And that, that seemed to work better for me. Um, so pro tip, do that, I guess. I'm gonna fucking... I gotta... Hold on. Let's find a track I actually know. Let's talk about the soundtrack for a second while I'm trying to actually find a good track. There we go. Here, this is the first track in the fucking game. What was all that other shit? God damn it. This is when he's in the bar, by the way. This is the flex screen or whatever. Fucking hey, what the fuck was all that other shit? The soundtrack in this game, I swear, and we'll hear it here in a second, is actually pretty good. It's not as good as Bandu Kazooie. Nothing fucking even touches Bandu Kazooie. That is like a masterpiece of fucking soundtracks. Uh, for platformers. That's like probably one of the best soundtracks of a platformer ever. Um, because it's just so dynamic with the level. Um, it, it's integrated with the level and whatnot. And it's just like different parts of the level have different little things and whatnot. And they made a whole video about this like this long time ago. Uh, the Nerd Symphonics number two. So go check that out if you want. But uh, that was actually a class project that I did one time. But the music of this game is actually pretty good. Um... It's not always, like, super memorable, but, like, the overworld theme's pretty good. Um, there's, there's just a lot of really good themes, um, which you'll be distracted by, uh, because, like, fucking, you'd, you'd be worried more about the gameplay and stuff. Actually, so, th the game was so similar to the, uh, N64 version that this guide was actually almost 100% accurate to, um, that version so I would just look in the guide to tell us how to even get through the game which is pretty cool like that's that's neato um so yeah you're just headed up these like fucking narrow ass platforms here I'll even show you see like uh look at those fucking platforms man like look how fucking narrow they are and and it's just a bunch of bullshit because you have bats like coming at you there's context sensitive buttons going up the whole way so you can like take out the bats they're not even the worst part it's just the platforms and the enemies are like on these things it just fucking sucks man and then you have to like climb these ropes and shit and then when you get to the top you can fall all the way fucking back down and just die and have to do it all again uh it's it's a bunch of shit and so um after that part comes another one of the worst parts in the whole fucking game and and i i, I will say i never 
so what happened was my friend would play most of the game. Sometimes I would play bits of the game. Like I did the bat tower just because I didn't want to be sitting there all day, like waiting for him to get it perfectly uh, when it's like just a really bullshit part, you know, or, or something like that. So, uh, but one of the things that he did excel at was the swimming parts in the game. I was never really that great at it, but he definitely got the swimming controls down like super good. They're good swimming controls. They're better than Mario 64's swimming controls, but also they're a little hard to get used to. I don't really remember specifically what it was, but it was just kind of disorienting the swimming. But I, I think it was definitely pretty good for the time. But there's a whole swimming section here right after there where it's like really dark the whole time. You can't actually tell where the fuck you're going. Um, it's just like impossible to even like fathom what the fuck is going on. And there's two really long shafts. Uh, <laughs> really long shafts. <laughs> but of, of like you're swimming down and they're really dark. Um, and then you have to like swim back up the other one and like. You have to figure out, like, like it's so hard to tell where you're going. And then, like, after the fact, this is this is why I wanted to have him here with me, because I wanted him to, like, tell me what he thought about these little parts, because I, because I, because he remembers some of these things better than I do, kind of thing. Um, but on the other side, once you finally get done, whatever the fuck you got to get done. By the way, you have a limited amount of air, so you have to, like, keep going into these bubbles and whatnot, kind of like. It's a lot better done than Banjo Kazooie, and uh, I I think I prefer the swimming control of Banjo Kazooie, but the uh, air system was just so like you you were really hurting for air the whole time you were underwater in Banjo Kazooie. Um, in Mario 64, you could just keep getting coins, which was like okay, that's cool. Like you know, so I'll, I'll give Mario 64 that. I just didn't really like the control there. Um, but anyway, it's like this whole big long freaking part where it's like you just it's so disorienting. And then what's fu what's fucked up is you have to um, swim up the second shaft. Or maybe the first one. I don't actually remember. Once you've hit, like, a switch, I still don't even know. And, like, that's how fucked up this is. And either way, it looks exactly like the one that you came down. So you're immediately thinking, like, what the fuck? I already just went down this. There's no way I, I need to just go back up the same shaft or whatever to get back up, but that's exactly what you have to do, or one that looks exactly like it. It's it's really stupid and just, like, badly designed. The level design there is not very good. Um, then there's a part where, uh, th this is a pretty funny part. There's a boss fight where you have to piss on everybody, um, to put out fires and stuff. That that was pretty good, actually. Uh, I'll, give a, I'll give this level that. That was actually a pretty good part of that level. Um, and the pissing control's pretty good. It kind of controls a lot like the, uh, pissing controls good that's the kind of shit i have to say in this game like what else would i have to ever say the pissing controls good it does though the pissing controls pretty good but um after that you get to um so you get out of there the the bulldog shark or whatever chases you he fucking rips the the catfish sharks to shreds and it's like really gory and whatever um you get to one of the better levels in the game, which is the Great Mighty Pooh level. Um, so you fight this guy, and the whole time he's, like, singing to you about how he's a fucking... He's, he's a giant, like, mound of shit or whatever. <laughs> and what you have to do is you have to throw corn and toilet paper at him. Or no, you, what's with the corn? Yeah, you gotta throw corn and toilet paper at him. Um... And then, uh, basically, that, like, that's how you destroy him. But you have to keep going throughout this thing. Um, it's a pretty cool boss fight, really. And he's, like, singing to you the whole time, so it's actually pretty funny, too. But he, he, and then there's, like, one part where he's, like, I'm gonna ram you up my butt. And Conker's, like, your butt! And he's, like, yes, my butt. Ah! <laughs> it's a Conker. It's really funny. I don't, I don't know. You kind of have to play it, kind of thing. Um... So, then the bad guys kidnap Barry. That's something. Uh, what, what's funny is, we did this level prior to uh, doing the Bat Tower level. Uh, most of this level, that is. And then we got to a part where it's actually the part where you need to go to level 6. Which is funny, because after the Great Mighty Pooh part, 
you kind of go down into where he was, and then there's like this big like, like uh, bottomless pit kind of thing, and you have to jump to this other thing. And then there's a part where you have to go through these fans, swim through these fans, and these fans are like super fast. And there's you uh, like, Conker gets gruesomely chopped up if you like fucking have the wrong timing at all on these things. So you're not only worried about your air consumption, you're worried about these blades or whatever. Um, and my friend would always dread that part, uh, and as would I. Um, but we kind of figured out what the timing was eventually uh, for these blades. But what was funny was I made him go through this part, and then we got up there, and we didn't have enough money because we hadn't done the Bats Tower level. And so the guy's like, yeah, fuck off until you get $1,000. And so we had to go back through the fans, meaning we also had to come... When we came back to this level after we did the Bats Tower... We had to go back through the fans again, and then, uh, I, I think actually when we left too, we had to go back through the fans one last time, which is funny. But, um, so yeah, that, that was a pretty, pretty decent level, the, the Mighty Poo level there. Here we go, finally some fucking familiar fucking music, I tell you, like, this is ridiculous, man. How long into the soundtrack this is, I tell you, like, what the fuck, like, it's... It's just ridiculous. But anyway, um, so yeah, so you get to this part, um, you get past this guy, like, finally, like, it took us forever because, um, you get past this guy, you know, you pay him off or whatever, and then you just steal your money back. I mean, that's what Conqueror always does, but, um, you get to this level called Ooga Booga, and this was another level where, um, there were some, like, really fucked up parts in this level, and this was what I was dreading the whole way through. Uh, I mentioned the race segment earlier. That's in this level. Um, the first part is pretty pretty decent. It's not that hard. I mean, maybe it is. I, I, I don't think it's too hard, but you kind of just go through, and then you have, like, this dinosaur, and you kind of have to lead him and kill a bunch of guys or whatever. And then you go to this club part, um... Where you're in this, like, nightclub and it's got this, like, really kicking music or whatever. Um. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty pretty decent level. Um. But then. Oh boy. When you get out of that fucking club level. You get to the. One of the most infamous parts of the game for me. Literally this took me weeks if not like a month or something like back when I first played this game on the N64 version because the control on this fucking uh so it's, it's a racing segment it's a lava racing segment right and the deal with that is basically you're chasing these three guys because they stole all your money or whatever but you're going at like mock speed like fucking down this like you have to avoid all of these things you have to get like a perfect run on this thing and not only that and in the controls like super uh like like you like you're you're like you're like going so if you if you don't like go like you can slow down but like there's really no point um you're like going this whole time you just fucking go man like go and then, um, you have to, like, weave yourself through these platform, like, these pillars and stuff. Um, and there's, like, this giant dinosaur. If you don't time it right, he fucking step on you every time. Or you just, like, run into his legs or whatever. Um, so you have to time that properly. And there's, like, jumps and stuff. It's, it's, it's a pain. But, um, and then once you get next to these guys, you, like, have to hit them with your bat and take back your money or whatever. Which we didn't figure out until a little ways in. Uh, on the N64 version, uh, obviously, like I said, the only difference is really that you got this analog stick, the new analog stick um, on the Xbox, and it just controls a little bit better, but it controlled a lot like the N64 version because um, I, I remember just having so much trouble with this level. Um, and the fucked up part is, even once you get this thing down, you know, you're fast as grease lightning, you, you got this shit, you are good, you get those guys every time. On the third, uh, lap of this race thing, once you've killed the first two guys or whatever, you run into a wall, a literal wall. It's a gate, but it's, it's, it's like, or it's like a fence, really. And, uh, they, they throw you a curveball. They're subverting expectations again, you know? 
They throw you a curveball. Um, and you're supposed to jump through this fence. So I think. Um, and I've done it. I did it the first time we ever got there. I actually did it. Or whatever. And then after that, I couldn't jump through this fence again. I don't know what was wrong with me. And I remember this being a big issue back in the day, too. And then... I found out what you're supposed to fucking do is just press uh, right or whatever on the analog stick and there's a fucking secret tunnel sitting there. Secret tunnel! Secret tunnel! Secret, 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 secret tunnel! I made that joke at fucking back then too. Anyway. What's fucking secret tunnel sitting right there? What the fuck? Like... Mm. And you, there's no way you would know this thing is here unless you just, like, get lucky or you have the guide. Well, the guide doesn't even tell you about this shit. I looked in the guide. It doesn't say it. As far as, I, I, it didn't read properly for me. It, it, I, we didn't read it properly. Something happened. Um, we, we, we didn't watch the whole video, or maybe we did, or my friend did, but he didn't really know that it was, like, a side path or something. But you have to know this path is there, and then you just take that path, and then you just beat the guy in that path, and that's it. And it's, it's super easy, but I, I did so many runs trying to go through this fence that, like, I spent hours on this thing. Probably, like, I don't know, six, seven, eight hours or something. We sat there and did this. I, I did it on my own a few times as well. Um, it just certainly took me a lot longer back in the day. And this, again, this is why you play the Xbox version if you're going to play this fucking game. But it's just infuriating, this part. You just get so fucking angry and so pissed off. And then I, I, I finally started to kind of remember. I mean, I, I knew at that point. I had already, like, you know, the Bat Tower and all that. But I knew. I kind of started to remember, like, up until that point, like, oh, yeah, this is a pretty fun game. We're, we're having a good time. I started to remember this isn't going to be easy. This is going to be... This is going to be tricky. There's a lot of parts in this game that are just going to... They're just going to fucking fuck us up, you know? So... Yeah, so that, that part is one of the most infamous parts in any game for me. I'm just, uh... Oh, you know what? Okay, so I, I do want to mention, uh, talk about this. The music on the overworld does change depending on, like, kind of what area you're in of the overworld. So that's kind of nice. Um, it's not quite as dynamic as uh, Banjo-Kazooie or whatever, though. Oh, and if, if this isn't bad enough, this race segment, this is one of the most infamous parts in any game for me, but if this isn't bad enough, directly after that, so I did the race segment, directly after that, there's a part with this boss fight or whatever, and it's a really tough boss fight because you're, you're on the back of this raptor, and uh, it's just like an endurance round, man. They don't they, do, they always start you back at the beginning of, of the whole thing every time until you get to like the second phase of uh, the final part of the boss or whatever. Um, and it's like this endurance round where you're taking all these guys by eating them with the raptor, but the guys can gang up on you and fucking knock you off the raptor, and then you have to, like, run to the context-sensitive button, um, to even get back onto the raptor, because the raptor will try eating you or whatever. It's all sorts of fucked up. Um. Right, so, um. So yeah, but there's like a gauntlet. There's like five rounds of these uh, enemies or whatever, and and it's just it's an endurance marathon. And then you finally get to uh, th this this uh, boss after that. And and luckily this is where there is a checkpoint. So like if you die, you you won't go back through the endurance round again. You just stay on this part. Um, but what you basically have to do is he like is gonna like swing down his club. So you have to time it perfectly to where he's swinging down his club. And you have to go up and bite him in the dick. <laughs> this is, these are real things. This is a real thing in a video game. This, this game has all sorts of things where where could you ever say this other than in Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. You bite him in the dick and then uh, somehow this reveals his ass or something. And then you go and bite him in the ass. And uh, you do that a few times and then uh, the boss is done. But this part took us fucking... It, fucking an, an age to, to get through this part because it's just like it's such a tricky and difficult part that, that that's the whole game in a nutshell there's so many difficult parts and that's why i'm trying to kind of go through it little by little because i want to tell you guys about these parts because that's 
really the only way to talk about this game is to talk about the parts that make up the game. And I'm probably missing a lot of stuff. I'm just kind of briefly going through it here. This video is probably already going to be long enough as is. Um, luckily, that's one of the other worst parts of the game is that lava section, that boss. Um, because after that, then you get to a part where... Um, a pretty decent level, actually. They finally, finally, finally give you a weapon, a shotgun. And, uh... You're basically, you're going up this, this like, graveyard or whatever to kind of get uh, to this, this, like, mansion or whatever. And then you realize that they're referencing uh, Dracula, um, Bram Stoker's Dracula from, from back in the day. Like, that movie or whatever. Because uh, he's got, like, the same haircut or what haircut. Like, that, you know, the same hair, the, the wig or whatever from that movie. Um so, yeah, so you're going up there, you got the shotgun, you're like, man, this is fun, like, I'm finally getting to shoot shit, and, like, that's fun, and that's a lot of good stuff right there. Um, and then you finally get up there. Uh, there. Okay, so there's a part right before there, too, where you're, um... Sorry. Anyway... There's part right before that. I'm sorry. I'm listening to this. There's this part right before there where um, you go up that you're going up this path right before the mansion, and there's like these uh, these like worms that randomly come out of the ground or whatever. I thought this was a little unfair because um, they just kind of come out. You just kind of have to trial and error, figure out where, like when they're gonna come up or whatever, and then shoot them with your gun um, before they get you. Because if they get you, they knock you off this like like thin path. That's a common theme in this game. Thin fucking paths. Um, so, yeah, so that kind of sucks, that part, but, you know, it's not too bad once you kind of get used to it, but you have to, like, you kind of have to learn the pattern of where they're at, and this and that, and so that's, that's a little sucks. Um, once you finally get into the mansion, oh, okay, this is, this is a, definitely one of the best parts of, like, you literally would never say this in any other context except for Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. That's, that's why I like this game, uh, is the humor but there's definitely a lot of problems with the game as we've discussed so far. So we'll get to that in a minute here. But um, there's a part where when, once you get into the mansion, you're talking to Dracula or whatever. And you find out it's like one of Conqueror's ancestors. Uh, and then he turns you into a bat. And your attack as a bat you have to go and uh get a bunch of the villagers that are like around the mansion or whatever and then like grind them up so he'll so dracula will drink the blood of them or whatever um but he turns you into a bat and you're, you're first of all your attack while you're a bat is shitting like um shit you know it's bat shit and you're shitting them onto the enemies that'll stun them so you can go down and grab them and then bring them back to the grinder also, you go in the grinder. That's the joke we're making the whole time from Good Burger. Anyway, so um, you uh, basically uh, you you're shitting on these guys to go down. But it's what's funny is when you go into uh, like a there's like a first person segment. It's like actually you're like inside of his asshole, looking out to like to where you can drop the shit like top down. Like, you're, like, looking down out of his asshole where the shit's dropping out. You can literally never say that in any other game. What other game do you do that where you're flying as a bat and you can go first person from his asshole to drop shit? No other game has that. Like, so, if you want to do that, Conker's Bad Fur Days is your definitive game for that. Um... So after that, there's a part, um, so like, what ends up happening is Dracula, like, gets too much blood and he gets really fat and then he, like, falls down in the grinder, which is pretty funny. Um, and then, so you're, you're trying to get out. There's three keys. Uh, this part's pretty difficult, actually. It's not as bad as some of the other ones. It's actually more well done. I, I enjoyed doing this part more. It's still a really big pain in the ass to do this part. Um... So, uh, so 
yeah, it's still a big pain in the ass to do this part because there's like some narrow platforms and stuff. But what's cool is, uh, not cool. I, okay, so this part, it, it, it is kind of cool actually. Um, so you start off in this part and you're looking for the keys or whatever. And there's these, there's this door at the front. This is where you're trying to get out of. There's a bunch of zombies there, and it's just some straight, like, shooting zombie gameplay. And, you, and it's a little bit annoying, because you do have to shoot them, like, every time you die. They all respawn, this and that, and they'll respawn a little bit here and there. Um, so, yeah. So, you're shooting these zombies, so that's cool. It's, it's just like, a, it's a nice marriage of, uh, of uh, the, the shooting gameplay and the platforming gameplay, because you're, like, going to find these keys. That's the platforming part. What I always did was I always, I always shoot all the enemies, this like horde of zombies that are down near the door or whatever. And uh, what's fucked up is though, sometimes if you die, it'll start you right in the horde of zombies at the bottom of the stairs. Usually it starts you at the top of the stairs, but just sometimes randomly it'll start you at the bottom of the stairs for no fucking reason. And you're just in the, the midst of the zombies and you're going to get hit a few times, which is just stupid. So what, uh, what you got to do is there's three other areas, basically. One of them is like... Uh, so one of them is like these narrow platforms. First, there's like a context-sensitive button. You gotta like um, throw knives at the bats again or whatever, which is like kind of tricky. There's a, a timing to it or whatnot. Um, but like once you get that key, you have to like like the whole way there is like these narrow platforms, kind of like the bat tower, which is kind of funny because it is like a bat tower. Anyway, you like go through and you're weaving through it, and if you can just somehow get past there because if you even um if you even uh like um if you even like stray from that just a little bit you're gonna fall and you might survive but the key goes back to up there if you like ever fall or if, if any if you get hit or anything so this is why you need to preemptively take out all these zombies because if they hit you the key might just like disappear and go back to where it was which sucks because that means you have to go all the way back and do it again um so that one kind of sucked and then there's one I, I oh the sec okay so the second key is out in the courtyard so there's like this long winding path out there there's a lot of villagers and stuff this is why you, you probably just take those out first and then you get the key then you go back that one's not as bad the third one though is um it's up on these like they like drop a ladder for you on the third one and it's like up in this area and you have to realize that um there's like this uh like this switch you got to hit first or like a thing that you have to like grab onto to open this like secret hidden bookcase um path or whatnot so so there's that and then you gotta um once it, once, yeah, so once you have, like, it's just, like, a really annoying, uh, parts. I mean, they're not annoying too bad, but they're, like, they're, like, kind of hard to do, you know, just like the rest of the game. A lot, a lot of hard shit to do. Then once you finally get all of them back, you, uh, you, you brought this barrel up or something, like, um, earlier when you're coming up towards the mansion, and so he's sitting there the whole time in the, like, the lobby area of this, the, the main room with the stairs or whatever. So you get him. And then you're, like, going down that same hill from earlier, and you get to, like, knock out all the snakes or whatever. But again, it's, like, a winding, narrow fucking path. Um, so it's just, like, you have to be really precise with your movement. And, and me and my friend spent a minute on that, too. Like, it's, jeez. It's just, like, there's all these things that are, like, these little annoying things. Like, most of these things, you didn't have to do... Well, there, there were some things like that in Banjo-Kazooie, but not, not wholly a lot like that. But, yeah, like, so that, that part's just annoying. But then once you get finally past there, uh, you can finally get out of the level. So that level's not so bad. Then is the, like, a, a really big level of the game. Um, I'm, a, I'm even glad we got through this in one night. Uh, but uh, it's the war segment, which is finally where you start seeing a lot of the guns from the multiplayer is in this segment. This is the eighth segment of the game. There's only one more chapter after this, and it's not even very long. The, the last chapter. The only reason it's long is because the final boss we'll, we'll get to in a second. Um, so, basically, you get drafted into war and um, you have to go in there. There's, like, this whole thing. Um, it's a big parody of all war movies and all that shit. And, uh, there's a... It's, like, this TNT guy um, and they keep respawning or whatever, but you have to, like, get them 
past these like boxes, like these falling boxes and whatnot. That one's not so hard. And you set them on one side of, of the thing. Um, but on the other side, there's like these landmine spider things that kind of look like the, the spider guys from Doom or whatever. Um, and there's like this dirt path between them, which is kind of like once you notice that, that's kind of where you have to push him through there. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's kind of tricky to do because if, if he goes anywhere near the landmine spiders, he blows up, you blow up the whole thing, you're, you're dead, you know, kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of tricky. Then, then you get put on a boat and you go over to the other part, which is like, first you're crawling on this beach, there's gunfire everywhere, and you, you just get fucked up if you don't just keep going. You gotta go, go, go. And um, once you finally make it inside, like way later on, um, then you're like going through this like, it's almost like a, a cover shooter, a cover based shooter. It's like Uncharted, like, you know, like how many years before un fucking Uncharted, you know, like or whatever. Um, you're, like, hiding behind this thing, like, shooting these teddies. That's what they are. They're teddy bears, basically, that are, like, the Nazis. They're called teddies, you know? It's, like, makes sense, right? Um, you're, like, shooting them and shit, and you go through these corridors. Then you get to this part. There's lasers that you have to, like, jump through. And, and the, the fucked up thing is these teddies, like, come down, and they'll, like, spawn at, like, the most random spots. So it's, like, it's almost like a... My friend said it's it's this is like the most terrifying part of the game because the suspense is just like you never know where these things are just gonna pop down, um, and getting past these lasers is just a bitch too. It's like weaving yourself between them and stuff is just it, it just it takes some precision. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's really tough. Um, like look at this shit. Look at this fucking laser pattern there. Like this shit. Uh, look at this shit. Like fucking. It's ridiculous, man. Uh, and, you know, eventually we get through that, and then there's a part where no matter what you do, you still kill this guy no matter what, so that's kind of funny. But, um, there's a part where you're, like, in the middle, you get this, like, tank, and you, oh, uh, well, actually, before that, there's, um, there's this escort segment with this, this, like, squirrel guy, and he's, like, got this in invincible armor or whatever, which is pretty cool. It's like, why the fuck don't I have this, you know, the video games or whatever. So you're kind of following him the whole time, and uh, then you gotta blow up this door or whatever. And then, um... Oh, shit. Oh, no, no, I was gonna say, I, I thought there was a part before this. Then there's a part where you're, like, in this um, turret gun, and you're, like, shooting things and stuff. And then, uh... There's a part with a tank. And this is one of the more frustrating parts in the game as well. Because you're, you're steering this tank um, basically through these, like, really narrow platforms. <laughs> Here we are again. Narrow platforms, right? Hold on just one second. I gotta... You're steering through these narrow platforms or whatever. Um... So, yeah, sure, through these narrow platforms or whatever, and it's just kind of ridiculous because, uh, like, what you have to do is you there's, like, this big tower in the middle, and this is the thing you're trying to take out, right? So you go and uh, basically you have to, like, wait, because your tank's, like, kind of invincible to the tower's fire or whatever, but you have to wait until the tank is, like, not looking at you. Then you get out of the, um, out of the tank. And then you have to, like, go and platform over to these bridges. And on the other side, like, there's, like, gaps. And then and then on the other side of the bridge, on the bridge, that's not lowered. It's, like, up in the air. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to lower it so you can get the tank through. Um, there's, like, the context-sensitive B buttons. And you, like, hit them. And then you, then they go down or whatever. And then you have to steer the tank through. And it's, like, this whole process or whatever. And there's these guys throwing grenades at you the whole time. Um, and whatnot. And... It's a really tricky thing, and it takes a lot of good timing and whatnot, and you have to really, like, watch and wait for the, the tower and all this stuff. And this this took us forever to get through. And we're looking, and I'm, like, looking over at the end, because you can see the end from the beginning, and I'm like, what's the point of us getting over there the whole time? And then I finally fucking figure it out once we get there. I look uh, at the very end, by the way. So I look, and I look over, and I'm like, oh, no. Look at the tower. Look at the legs. We were supposed to be shooting 
a part of the legs each time we went around each one of these bridges. So then I had to die and just start over. And then we, we did eventually get it when we knew that. So that, it was just it's just a bunch of bullshit, though, because the, the, the platforms are so narrow. It's so easy to drive your tank off of the thing or to fall off of the thing because the, the, the gaps, um, if you're not really good at the, like, the, the jump, you know, like I said, you have to get that height of the jump and all that. Um, if you're not really good at that, and I kind of figured it out myself, my friend wasn't as intuitive with it or whatnot, but, um, like, if you're not really good at that, and even sometimes, even if you are good at that, you still, like, glitch through the, the ground or whatever, I don't know, like, it, it just seemed unfair, but, like, um, you, it's gonna take you forever to get through this, and it took us a, a long, long time to get through this part, um, once we finally kind of figured it out, we're like, oh, okay, and then, and then we, we got past it. But it was still a pretty tough part. Then you get to this boss fight. Oh, man. Now, my friend is just having the hardest time with this. And, and I, I, just by watching him, I kind of feel like I got down what I was supposed to do. But he was having just the roughest time with this boss fight. Um, wh what it is, is there's... Like, basically, these, these little platforms that, like, there's these submarines out in the water or whatever. There's these little platforms with, uh, with uh, ladders that lead up from the water. Um, so, if you fall in the water, you can get back up or whatever. But they start shooting these giant missiles at you, which is actually a thing from the first boss fight. They start shooting these giant missiles at you. And it's like, holy fucking shit. Like, what am I supposed to do? And then they give you uh, a rocket launcher yourself, but it's really slow to reload. So you have to get a really accurate fire at these missiles. You have to destroy the missiles, which was his hardest part, was shooting the missiles because they go so fast. And you have to really line up your shot. And sometimes the missiles can get out of line with where you can even look, basically. Um, and then you have to get a good shot on the summary, and you have to keep doing this a bunch of times. Um, so that was a really tricky part of the thing for us. And um, just by watching him, I kind of got down what was um what i was kind of supposed to do so by the time i did it, it only took me a few tries to kind of get through it but it was still just a pain in the ass and then um uh, the, the, there's, there's another boss fight segment after that where you're fighting this giant like fucking guy and uh you have to like he's got like all these weapons like these this turret gun and all this stuff and you have to like blow those up while he's like firing at you which is a big pain in the ass uh at least you get the tank this time or whatever and then, if that's not bad enough, after all of this stuff, and, it, and it's just a big, big slog to get through that, that boss, that boss because uh, it, his weapons are just so powerful. He fires, like, eight missiles at a time at you in the final round of that, and you have to just, like, somehow get out there in between. The tank, the tank has tank controls, by the way, uh, which just kind of sucks. Uh, so it's like you can imagine doing all of the things that I've been talking about with this tank, with tank controls. Or whatever. So it's like it's just tricky to maneuver this thing out, you know, fast because it's not a fast vehicle; it's a tank. Um, so you get the idea. It's pretty tough. But if that wasn't bad enough, then they start uh, an escape countdown sequence, which is just fucked up. But you have to get out, uh, and there's a bunch of lasers and shit out there again with a bunch of teddy bears and shit. And then look at this. Look at this fucking laser patterns. This is even worse than last time. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's just like, and you're doing all this under a time limit or whatever, and you're just fucking praying that you're going to make it out of this thing. Like, this this is one of the hardest parts of the whole fucking game, other than that race segment, I tell you. Oh, but once you finally get through that fucking shit, it's, it's, not, it's not that bad after that, right? No, the whole rest of the game's easy. It's, it's just a breeze through the rest of the game. It's so good. You get to, uh, you get to um, do a parody of The Matrix. Remember The Matrix? Remember how that had just come out at the time of this game and they, like, put this in here as the last level? Like, that's pretty crazy. You're doing a bank heist or whatever and you get the slow motion uh, bullet time stuff and my friend's like, yeah, man, this is, like, super fun. And I'm like, yeah, this, this looks fun. And, like, he just, like, tore through that part. I remember that taking me a long time on the N64 and I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you know, like... He just, like, tore through it. He didn't have to try twice. He didn't even have to fucking try twice. And he just tore through it. And he's like, yeah, that was really fun. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. It's a cool segment of this game, right? After all the bullshit we fucking went through. Um, and, 
So yeah, once you finally fucking get through that... Okay, so the whole thing, the whole plot of this game, basically, is that you find this out, like, like in the second or third level or something. This panther king is trying to get Conquer so he can use him as a, a leg for his table. He's, the leg on his table is wobbly, and it's, like, broken or whatever, and his milk keeps spilling. Um, so you finally get to the end, and you get to this thing with the panther king, right? He's there. He's got this scientist guy who's like, oh, yes, the, the table and the leg and then the, uh, how do I, uh, you know, he's like really, he's like working out how, how to just get a replacement leg for this table. Like he's not much of a scientist, but the, the funny part is he kind of at the end here, this is, this is spoilers, by the way, for Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. At the end here, he, uh. You go into this room at, at the bank. It's like the bank vault or whatever. Okay, first you get like a million dollars or whatever. And I'm a millionaire or whatever. That's what Conqueror's saying. Yeah, who, boo, yeah, okay. And then, uh, fucking... So... They fucking gun down your girlfriend and she dies. And then, like... Um... The, uh... The, the king here or whatever... Like, he starts feeling, like, sick or whatever. And you're like, wait, what's going on here? And then a fucking chest burster bursts out of his fucking, uh, stomach. Or his chest. It's chest, obviously. Not stomach. His chest. Or whatever. And, um... It becomes, like, a xenomorph from aliens. It's like, what the fuck? You know, like... It, and it looks pretty pretty close to the, like... You know, you can see... Um... Where's a good picture? Oh, where's a good picture of him here? You can kind of see, uh, here's a good one, good shot of him there. You can kind of see how he's, uh, but yeah, and anyway, so there's, there's, uh, there's an alien from Aliens, that's the, or from Alien or Aliens, you know, like, that's the, the, um, that's the boss, that's the final boss of the whole fucking game, and he, he, uh, you open this airlock or whatever, and uh, then the, the the scientist guy gets swung out to, or whatnot. And he just goes out into space and dies or whatever. And uh, the Panther King is obviously dead. He's got a chest burster coming out of him. <sighs> and then comes the most. You would think. You would think there's not any way it could get any harder than any of the things I've mentioned so far. It comes the hardest part of the whole game. And. Man, and I remember this being one of the hardest parts of the N64 version too. But I didn't remember how fucking bad this was. How terrible this fucking final boss was. Because you know what it is? It's a reference to Mario 64. Which is kind of clever. I'll have to give them that. Uh, at the time, I don't know if they thought they were going to make Banjo-Tooie. They probably thought this was going to be one of the last N64 games on the N64. They probably thought they were going to make Banjo-Kazooie for... Or Banjo Tui for another platform or something. Um, but at the time, this is one of the final N64 games. The very first N64 game was Mario 64, and the very last boss in Mario 64 is Bowser. And what you have to do is you you grab his tail and you spin him by doing this in a very specific pattern. And on the N64 stick, you can see it's like ugh, it's so much worse. But this is the final boss in Mario 64. That's how that works, right? That's what you do in Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. You have to beat up on this Xenomorph. And then you fucking grab its tail. And you're spinning and you're spinning. But the spinning is just so precise. You have to like have... Like, I finally got how it was at some point. But it wears your thumb out so good. Now, the one thing is... At least, at the very fucking least, we're doing this on an Xbox uh, analog stick, which I think helped a bit. Um, at least in the regard that, like, the N64 stick isn't the best stick. And my, mine that I used back in the day is super worn out. Uh, compared to this, like, I never realized. This stick is really tight. Like, mine... Is just really loose. I probably should have brought it out. Whatever. Uh, so that probably didn't help at all when I was doing the the thing back in the day. But 
now now with this controller, I was like, oh, it's going to be probably better, right? Well, no, it's about the same. It's just, just as hard to get the thing spinning or whatnot. And if that's not bad enough, once you've got it spinning, it's so fast that you're not going to... It's it's hard to tell where you're even fucking going with this thing. Um, so you have to just kind of, like, be really precise with your throw, which is, like, super impossible. But you can, because uh, I, I did it. And, you know, then you throw them out the airlock, and you have to do this multiple times. And then it just starts blocking your attacks, like, you know, in the second and third round of the fight. You know, you throw them out three times. Three times is the standard, like platform or boss thing or whatever it's like um and it, it when i'm saying all of this it doesn't seem that hard but it's the hardest part of the whole game because the control is just all fucked man there's a certain rhythm you have to do to keep building momentum on this thing and it just takes forever to build momentum um unless you've got like the perfect rhythm going on here which is super hard to do and i maybe i'm just bad i don't know maybe my analog stick is just wearing now that we finally fucking did it a few times and even my friend jameson was like man like i can already feel this thing wearing out like because we're doing this and, and like the the strategy is like using your palm like that's one of the good ones but like it's so awkward because you also have to press the b or a button or something to throw them out so you're like doing this but it's not just like doing this like really slow you have to like I can't even do it now. And then I figured out a good motion was with my thumb, and I kind of got the motion down. But your thumb starts to fucking. I'm already. I'm already feeling the effects of this, you know. Um, and you have to keep in rhythm for like, for like a fucking minute, man. It's ridiculous. This shit. To even just get a chance to throw them out the window, and then if you, you know, if you don't throw them out, you just have to do it all over again. So. It's just one of the most fucking terrible final bosses, like, ever. I love... I, I, I'm i down with the reference. I like that it's a reference also to Mario 64. It's, like, a nice end cap game. You know, the first game was that, and then one of the very last games on the N64 was the same final boss, if you think about it, in a sense, which is pretty cool. It's, like, a, it's a nice tying it together kind of thing. But, um... Yeah, fuck, man. Like, oh my god. So, I'm gonna be real. We didn't make it through that. We didn't do that part. But, I still consider the game beat because I had done that back in the day. The game is so similar enough, and I've seen the ending too. The game is so similar enough that you, um, that I know how things play out. I, I understand the, uh, the um i understand like what what the I, I get how the gameplay was going there you know so like that's what i'm worried about so at the very end after all of that uh let's see so let's see sorry i'm, I'm trying to scroll through the video here so i can actually kind of remember what's going on yeah, yeah, okay, so at the very end, after all that, uh, the alien, like, fucking, he, like, he, he's, like, he's still here, so then, like, Conker's, like, hey, game designer, can you give me, a uh, like, a weapon or something? And then he, like, goes into this, like, you know, like, this, like, subspace here or whatever, you know, just, like, in the Matrix to get weapons, um, and then he gets a giant sword, and then he, like, slices off the head of the thing, and then everyone, all the characters from the game, even ones you thought were dead, like, come back. And they're like, oh, Conker's the king now. And Conker's all pissed off that he's the king, basically. Um, because, you know, he doesn't want to be the king at all. Like, he, he just he just wanted to go home and just, uh, you know, fuck his girlfriend or whatever. That's all he wanted. But he doesn't get that because she's dead now. And, uh, you know... So that's why he's sitting there at the beginning all, like, pissed off or whatever. Because he doesn't get what he wants. It's his bad fur day. They never made the sequel. There was going to be a sequel. They never made it. Um, I, I think that the sequel maybe could have been a really good game. Because they would have ironed out some of the flaws of the original. But, uh, yeah, we never got that. There was going to be a multiplayer sequel at 1.2. We never got that. But, um, 
in terms of like which one's better like obviously the fucking xbox version is better if you're gonna play this game you should really play that version because it controls just a little bit better and it, the, the button mapping is a little more intuitive other than the uh, a b situation uh, like it just it just feels better to play but also it feels similar to the original game to play in a sense i'm sure it plays better uh and it looks a lot better, obviously. It's very crisp, and it looks really good, especially with the fucking pound cable. Like, holy shit. Like, I, it looks like an Xbox 360 game, I, I swear. Like, it's that good looking. And it, and it came out in, like, 2005, so, like, you know, they knew how to get the most out of the original Xbox there, um, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. But, yeah, man, if you're going to play the game, I please just play the Xbox version. You know, it's like, what do I think of Conqueror's Bad Fur Day? I think that it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good game, but it has a lot of big flaws that kind of hold it back from being an amazing game, a fantastic game, a great game. You know, um, I, I'm very conflicted on it. I do enjoy parts of it. I enjoy thinking about the game more than I enjoy playing the game. Let's put it that way. Um, and, and it's always fun to talk about all the bullshit parts and whatever, um, and kind of remember back how, how, like, how tough it was once we're past it, but, like, man, the game is just, it's so challenging sometimes, and they're so precise of stuff, and, and it's almost like, I almost wonder if this is just, like, a response to, like, everyone being like, oh, you know, Banjo-Kazooie was not hard or something, like, maybe somebody said something like that. And so they're like, well, you want hard. We're going to give you a bunch of bullshit difficulty. And, like, you know, we're going to put a bunch of pitfalls and peril in there. And just fuck you and all this shit. Fuck you, Riddler. And we're just going to make a big, um, big fucking game where there's death around every corner, you know? Or whatever. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's really not, like... It's a tough game. Like, seriously, I'm going to put it out there. that It's a tough game. But it's a game that if you put some practice into, you're definitely going to be able to make it through. Um, not that my friend's not very good at video games, because he is. He's, he's definitely gotten a lot better, especially after a lot of them that we've played. And I've been very surprised by some of the games he's actually beaten, like uh, Zelda 1. Uh, he beat without, mostly without input from myself, other than me trying to kind of guide him along to where he needed to go and all that. But, like, he, he, he kind of got through that pretty impressively. And so, so, some stuff like that, you know. He's gotten some, through some tough games, and I I really uh, applaud him for that. But, um, like, this is certainly one of them. This is certainly one of the tougher games that we, that we had to get through, you know what I mean? Like, so, the fact that we both did it made it a little bit easier, but... I applaud him for getting through uh, mostly to the end there. And we, we did our best, but there's no way I'm going to like try and break my Xbox stick over this fucking final boss. Especially when I already know kind of how things play out or whatnot. So, you know, whatever. I, I consider the game done. I, I've seen it. I've beat it. Thing. That's it's not a big deal. Uh, but, yeah. Stuff like that, stuff like the race segment, stuff like most of the war area, which is a cool segment, uh, you know, shooting the guys and stuff, that's a lot of fun, but, you know, it's marred down by, like, oh, there's a bunch of lasers, and, like, you know, you fucking... Oh, I didn't even talk about escaping the war se sequence, that part fucking sucks, too, it's really hard. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, just a bunch of stuff like that. There's just a little bunch of little areas, like the bat tower and stuff, and the the spitting blades of death underwater, and that fucking underwater shaft shit. That stuff is just is not very good. Um, so overall, I really do like the game. It's just going back and playing it. There's a lot of things that I already knew were not so great out of it. But, you know, I, I don't even know necessarily that it didn't age well or whatever. It's just, like, it, it was never that great to begin with, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, like, it's just, 
it's just hard to sort of recommend to anybody who's not like a hardcore um you know n64 era like platformer um because it des definitely feels like an old platformer too at times uh so it's just kind of hard to recommend at some point but i still really do like the game um it's just kind of an ordeal to get through and, and it's there's a lot of parts that are you're, you're gonna have to get good or not you know like so, so that's why it's kind of hard for me to recommend but it does have a lot of good humor the the graphics are really nice the music is pretty good um there are a lot of really good segments and a lot of really cool platforming and uh you know the, like some of the gun stuff is pretty good uh, the multiplayer is, is a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm like, you know, it's like a half and half kind of thing. I like the game, but I'm not blind to its flaws, you know. There's a lot of big flaws to the game. Um, and personally, I prefer Banjo-Kazooie over it, even though Banjo-Kazooie has some stuff like Rusty Bucket Bay and... Uh, you know, some of the parts in Bubble Goop Swamp, I guess. Like, I never really had that much trouble with those. But um, some of those parts, uh, just, just has parts like that where they're, like, not as good. I would rather play that than Conker's Bad Fur Day most days. Um, but, you know, at least they did make some good improvements on the Xbox version. And that was what was really surprising to me because I always thought the Xbox version was... Uh, very inferior to the N64 version, but, um, not really. I would say it's definitely better, and, um, I'm here to settle that debate, I guess. Play the Xbox version. Um, I didn't think there was any way it could be, you know, like, I, I thought they might have improved things a bit, but, like, yeah, it definitely controlled a little better, and there's just some better stuff there, so I definitely recommend that version over the N64 version, um, if you're gonna play the game. But, you know, um, that's pretty much it. I, I don't know what else I really want to say about the game, so I am going to give it a 7.8 out of 10 for being a flawed game. <laughs> 7 out of 8 out of 10. Too much water or whatever, you know, Pokemon Gen 3 or whatnot. Um, because I still really do enjoy the game at some level, but it's a flawed game. Maybe 7.8 is a little high. Maybe like a 7.4 or 3 or something. Probably 7.3. Let's give it that. 7.8 is a little high. Um, that's what we're going to give. We're going to give it a 7.3. You know, pretty good game, but it's marred down by a lot of flaws. And, uh, yeah. Would you believe that this is the first Xbox game I ever, ever beat? Xbox. Uh, first game I ever beat. So... I think it's kind of unfortunate we never did get a sequel, but, you know, there's always Project Spark, so guess we'll have to make our own, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, basically, uh, that's it. That's, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, so... It, it was, it was a bad fur day indeed. <laughs> But there were, there were some good redeeming elements to it as well. So, I don't know. That's, that's, that's really all I have to say about the game. It's, it's a mixed situation, but the game is good. It's just, it's for the hardcore, you know? You gotta be hardcore to play this game and experience all the gruesomeness and whatever of the game. Um, so, yeah. But there's some funny bits to it, so that's cool. But anyway, that was Conker's Bad Fur Day, the live and reloaded for the Xbox, and basically a review of the original, too. Two games, so the price of one right there. So, uh, anyways, until next time, this has been Jay-Z NES saying keep it classic. Stick around for more reviews, underrated games, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Jay-Z, out.